Hello and welcome to this next exercise, another simple linear regression. Uh, this time we're looking at uh, a claim that the longer you're married, the happier you are. So we have uh, data on the years married and a happiness index. So, and we're going to test this claim. Okay, so again, we have uh, a problem where there's a table and an output, or an Excel output, and we need to just fill in the blanks. Now, in the previous videos that we've done, we had calculated those coefficients from the data. And so we had to calculate all of the differences between xi and x bar. Remember, we had this formula, all of these things divided by the summation of all of these things squared, right? And it was a big, long, tedious calculation. Well, we'd like to avoid doing that if possible because it's time consuming and probably for you, not very interesting to watch. So. Uh, sometimes you'll find that there are shortcuts to getting that same result. And so in here we can see, looking down here, while well, I have standard errors, uh, and for this one I also have uh, a test statistic. So we can work with that. We also have confidence intervals. So we can use this information actually as shortcuts to getting our coefficients. We have to remember, or maybe if uh, your instructor gives you the formula sheets, if we remember how these numbers are obtained, that can give us those shortcuts to finding the coefficients. So if you remember the test statistic for the hypothesis test, this is that coefficient divided by its standard error. Well, here we were given a t statistic, and we were given uh, a standard error of 0.23, well, that's a much shorter way to calculate that slope coefficient than it is to calculate all of those differences and squaring them and adding everything together. So if I just solve this for that coefficient, that'll be 2.73 times 0.23. So here I have a slope coefficient of 0.63. Didn't take nearly as much time that time, did it? So that's a much quicker way. Now, how can we do it for the intercept? We don't have the t statistic, we do have the standard error. We also have the confidence interval estimates. Now, that confidence interval, so this gives us 34.67 and 86.27. Well, we know that those were calculated by that coefficient, which that's what we want to solve for, plus or minus a critical value times a standard error. Well, we do know what this is. We do have that standard error. We can look up the critical value. That's easy enough. But even easier still is that our coefficient is always going to be exactly in the middle uh, of those two values, of that confidence interval. So if we just find the middle, so 34.67 plus 86.27 divided by 2, that gives us exactly the middle of that interval, 60.47. There we go. Much easier way to find our coefficients. Uh, standard error we have. Now we can get that t-statistic using the same formula up here. So now we have the coefficient is 60.47. Standard error we have is 8.11. So this divided by 8.11745. Good. We can get our p-values. Let's. Uh, why don't we get our our confidence interval estimates first? So that one is going to be. Uh, again, I'll write out the formula again. Plus or minus critical value. Oops. We don't know that yet. Times the standard error. So again, we do need that degrees of freedom. Uh, and that's going to come from the ANOVA table, which, which we need to figure out as well. So again, all of our formulas for regression, k minus 1, k is the number of coefficients that we've estimated. Here we've estimated an intercept and a slope, so k is 2, so degrees of freedom is 1. Error, this is n minus k. We have 5 observations, 5 minus 2 is 3, so the degrees of freedom for this confidence interval is 3, and finally our error, this is n minus 1, so this is 4. So there's our, our degrees of freedom for our relevant uh, 
critical value for this confidence interval. So let's figure out those limits. This is going to be 0.63 plus or minus. This is going to be the same as we've used before. 3 degrees of freedom. Alpha divided by 2 is 0 0.025. So 3.182. Oops, I need a pen again. 3.182 times that standard error from here, 0 0.23. So this is going to give me, let's get uh, our lower limit first, 0.63 minus 3.182 times 0.23. So that's minus 0.1. Is that right? Let me just verify. Yeah, we're good. This is going to be minus 0.1, is there a second decimal? No, just 0 0.10 is good. And the upper limit is going to be 0 0.63 plus 3.182 times 0 0.23, 136. Okay, so that's an interesting result because we have a negative and a positive. So you can probably already jump to a conclusion, a, a very logical conclusion, as to whether or not there's a statistically significant relationship here. We've estimated this line, we've estimated our regression equation to be y hat 60.47 plus 0 0.63x, uh, where x is years of married and this is happiness. Now here we've developed a confidence interval estimate around this slope coefficient that ranges from negative 0 0.1 to 1.36 with our point estimates in the middle. So what can we say about this? Well at the 95% level of confidence we're unable to say that it's not zero. Zero is certainly a possibility. So what does that mean for our hypothesis test? If we develop these tests, these, inter, um, these tests for individual parameter significance, beta i is equal to zero, or it's not equal to zero, for our slope coefficient, so for b1, beta one, are we gonna reject or not? Well, based on those interval estimate results, it does contain zero. So I already know this is going to be a, uh, we're going to be unable to reject that null hypothesis. Let's just for fun, we'll get our p-values anyways. So let's uh, pull up our t-tables, three degrees of freedom. And we have, what's our first test statistic? 7.45. 7.45 is 7.45. Oh, we're almost, we're almost exactly on that critical value. That's rare. So 7.45, so that gives us a p-value of approximately 0 0.0025. That's a lie. This is a two-tailed test. We have to double that. So this is going to give us a p-value somewhat closer to 0 0.005. Still, very small p-value, so roughly 0, 0.05. So clearly we can reject the null hypothesis for the intercept. So for our intercept term, let's put this back to i. For our intercept, we can reject. And again, we see that in this interval estimate. There clearly there's no zero in there. So clearly that intercept is between 35 and 86. It's not zero at that level of confidence. So that p-value confirms that. Now let's see if our p-value confirms what we already found in our confidence interval. The test statistic of 2.73. So 2.73 is somewhere in here. So our p-value for this one, again, two-tailed test, times these by two. And we're going to be something less than 0.1, but greater than uh, 0.05. This one here multiplied by 2, 0.05. So we're greater than 0.05. That's all that really matters. Greater than 0.05. So for this one, we do not reject. And that was consistent with our confidence interval findings. So 
years married, in this example, years married is not a predictor of happiness. Okay, I don't know if uh, what our prior beliefs were, but at least in this example we found that, okay, I guess years married uh, it's insignificant. So, let's, um, you know what, I think I'll, uh, I'll start another video. I don't like getting uh, more than 10 minutes into a video and then I'll inevitably make a silly mistake and have to start from scratch. So, uh, we've got our confidence, uh, sorry, we've got our coefficients, we've got our estimated regression equation, we've got all of our hypothesis testing done in intervals, so, so this is a good place to stop. We'll come back and we'll finish off the ANOVA uh, in our next video, okay? Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.